I know uh, Connor will not mind starting his interview this way, though it is not what we have him on to talk about. Um, many reports now in the Buffalo Bills have confirmed that uh, according to physicians at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, DeMar Hamlin's breathing tube was removed last night, and he's making great progress. In fact, has been, according to Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport, FaceTiming with his teammates today and has addressed the entire team, which I'm sure was wow. an incredibly emotional moment. So, Connor, we start with that good news. How are you today? I'm I'm doing well. Even better to hear that. That's uh that's as good a news as we could have hoped for after a really scary situation on Monday night. Like I when I, I wasn't watching that live, but I had I was really tired after I spent all day in, in Tampa at the Rely Quest Bowl. I'd been in Atlanta over the weekend at the Peach Bowl, and I was like basically just like passed out on the couch and my wife kind of she's like, Hey, do you see like what's going on right now? You should probably get on Twitter and see what exactly has happened and how quickly uh, a situation that looked so routine turned um, obviously like very, very scary in a hurry. Um, I, I think everybody was just hoping for an update like this when we got that news and it took longer than what we would have originally hoped for, obviously to be able to get that, but just awesome to be able to hear that. And hopefully his family is is doing well. And this time uh, has is hopefully going to yield something positive when situations like this come about. I always just find myself saying like, let's just, Let's just hopefully get some sort of positives from from this, and let's let's be able to to take a step in the right direction. Uh, which fan base do you think was hurting more on Sunday? Do you think it was Ohio State or Michigan? It's got to be Michigan. It's got to be Michigan. If you're Ohio State, I came away really impressed by what we saw from them, to be honest. And there are people who are going to say that Ohio State would have won that game had Marvin Harrison been able to – Marvin Harrison Jr., I should say – if he had been able to stay in that football game. And if you're Ohio state, you're telling yourself you were right there and you did everything to show that you belonged on that stage. If you're a Michigan fan, how bad is life right now? Mm. You've got this Jim Harbaugh cloud hovering over your program. You've got, Oh, the NCAA cloud. That's also hovering over your program. You have to still accept the fact that as an eight point favorite in a semifinal game, when you entered as the 13 and O team, you lost where where is your light at the end of the tunnel if you're a Michigan fan right now? I, I think they are feeling bad, but I guess your question was who was feeling worse on Sunday? Still probably got to be Michigan fans, right? Like they had the most pressure on them to win, to show that they were better than last year, and they blew it. I mean, they got out coached. Their team wasn't as prepared as TCU was. They had a golden opportunity, and you could talk about the targeting, you could talk about the running bell touchdown that wasn't whatever. They blew their opportunity. It's as simple as that. Uh, Connor O'Gara, Saturday Down South, he is with us here and a uh, great writer there, friend of the show and a big supporter of Utah's first national uh, park there. I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I understand um, the real world of college athletics sometimes, and I've come to believe that most NCAA violations these days uh, in football are inside jobs. Uh, I feel like everything that was released yesterday with this Michigan – allegation is going to be nothing for the Michigan athletic program and is all targeted at one thing that Jim Harbaugh lied to the NCAA which can be a major as it says level one violation what is the relationship as you know it or read about it or hear about it or report about it between Harbaugh and Ward Manuel the AD is it seems to me from here in the south that those two are not always on the same page that they butt heads at times even I actually think they that they've been pretty tight. I, I I think that the way that they struck that deal after 2020 was more evidence that they're they're actually kind of on the same page, and there might be some frustration because who in a position of authority has Jim Harbaugh not upset during his time as a head coach at any level? I mean, it feels like everybody always ends up having a problem with him. So maybe there is a little bit of beef there, but you hit on something that's really important. It does feel like an inside job. What happened at Arizona State with with Herm Edwards? Inside job. What happened at Nebraska with Scott Frost and those NCAA violations that look really similar to what Michigan is kind of being accused of with, you know, uh, violating the, the COVID rules with, you know, the dead period and all these things looks like an inside job. And if there is an inside job at Michigan, and if it is somebody that's still working there or somebody that was working there, then what does that say about Jim Harbaugh and the trust that he has within that program? Because Jim Harbaugh likes to act like he's God. He really does. And he doesn't care who he upsets. 
he lacks self-awareness at some key points. And if he left for the NFL with the NCAA coming down on him for, you know, we'll wait and see kind of how serious, you know, these penalties are going to be for them, but it would be a la Pete Carroll. I mean, it'd be really similar to see a move like that. And it would kind of speak to to his character and, and really what he has become as a head coach. Connor O'Gara is with us now at CJ O'Gara on Twitter is how you follow him there and read his content at Saturday Down South. Here is podcast, his videos, all of that Saturday Down South. He's on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Your level of excitement in comparison to other national championship games for this one is what? It's it's like an eight and a half. Okay. All so, right. It's pretty high. We, that's we pretty feel, high. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty high, but we feel blowout on this show. We feel blowout. Are you not feeling blowout? I'm not, so that's why I'm excited. That's, that's the difference right there. We, we think really think next... T- we think TCU kills George. <laughs> <laughs> We're kidding. That's see. That's I think that's the only surprising result, right? That's the only surprising result that that could come of this is if TCU just beat George by like 28, and it was similar to Clemson, Bama, end of the 2018 season. I I don't think that happens though. I, I think TCU just always finds a way to play in these close games, and the the comp that I keep making for TCU is 2013 Auburn. We haven't seen anything like TCU in the playoff era, but 2013 Auburn, other, another team with a first-year head coach that took over a team that didn't go to a bowl game the previous season. Quarterback situation was murky at best coming into the year, and they just find a way to win all of these close games. I mean, TCU was tied or trailing in the fourth quarter five times this year. You're not supposed to get to a college football playoff national championship when you are playing with fire the way that TCU has. And so I think that TCU is once again going to give Georgia a really good fight. And I think this ends up being a close game with TCU making some big time offensive plays. And I think that Georgia, these last two games defensively, they've kind of shown you like, look, they have some holes. You know, we've seen four different receivers hit the century mark in the last two games against Georgia. What's to say that Quentin Johnston won't do the exact same thing. And I think that this is, this ends up being a, a matchup that's similar to what we saw in 2013 when Auburn goes down to the wire against Florida. Florida State it's this game that's decided what 12 seconds left and it's it's kind of a national championship for the ages I think we get something that's kind of similar to that so is the narrative coming out Georgia wins they're the alpha program hands down in college football the other side TCU wins the motto for everyone next August is if TCU can do it we can do it because they were 500 to one to win a national championship yeah Uh, yeah you hit the nail on the head Uh, that that's 100 percent it because I, I am still more of the belief that TCU is going to be an outlier and not this new thing that we're going to all of a sudden start seeing with teams that are outside of the top 20 in the talent composite rankings that 247 puts together every single year. The teams like that making it to a national championship because the only team outside of the top 10 that has been able to do that so far since that's been tracked in starting in 2015 was Clemson and Clemson had Deshaun Watson. So it's like, all right, well, that's, that's a little bit of an equalizer. But TCU is just truly a one of one. And that those will be the narratives. Absolutely. And Georgia, if it repeats first team in a decade to do so first team in the playoff era to do so, they'd be worthy of that. And I've been holding off on that because I think what Alabama has done in the last 10 plus years is just something that I don't think we'll ever see again in college football. But I do think that Georgia would be worthy of that type of storyline and to, to be in this spot where, you know, Kirby before the age of 50, having already repeated as a national champion champ would just be an unbelievable feat only three teams since 1980 have done that and I think that that Kirby is 60 minutes of of quality football away from being able to get that done um I'll reference Spurs in heat the way the Spurs won their NBA championships in the heat in a short period of time can you have two dynasties going on at the same time it's a great question it's a great question I don't think we would we can call Alabama a dynasty currently you know that's not what they are. Like they they haven't because, gone they haven't gone three years without a national championship, Connor. Right. It's it, it's it's almost like they're in their own category, though. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't feel like. But they won they, they won, they won the twenty twenty national championship, and they were ahead in the national championship title game last year. I know, which is but but if twenty eighteen. Obviously, the blowout in the national championship game, 2019, you don't get there. I don't know. It's 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 a little bit tougher to 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 say that just because I always feel like to be considered a dynasty, it's like, what, three and five years or something like that. 
I don't know what the the unofficial thing is. I always just use whatever it is that we use for for the Blackhawks in the the early 2010s. And I said that's the cutoff for for a dynasty, and they won three and I guess a six year stretch. But yeah, to me, I, I still think that that Georgia would would be in dynasty territory if they were to be able to get it done this year. But I don't know. I, I don't know if you can have to because then if you so you could say that Clemson was a dynasty in the latter part of the 2010s and you had two dynasties going on at the same time between Clemson and Alabama. I don't know. It's it's tricky. Dynasties are we need to define them probably a little bit better. And that's yeah. what you stumbled into. We have no true definition for it. Yeah, but I mean, you can't. sometimes it's obvious. Spurs won five in 10 years. I thought it was five and 15. I thought it was five and 10, okay, but I, I don't follow the NBA. I was surprised. I remember the Spurs were, were that good myself. I, I just feel like that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to consider Georgia a dynasty if they went back to back, man. Yeah. And where they are, so yes, but I feel like Alabama's still in a dynastic position. I don't even know if that's a word, but it's I like very it. smart. Though. Yeah, Count so it. yeah, Count it. Count it. I'll allow yeah. it. Give me two. <laughs> beep beep. We make this around the horn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Read everything about the game. All his thoughts on the SEC and everything at Saturday Down South. He is Connor O'Gara. You can also follow him on Twitter at CJ O'Gara. Thank you very much for the time, Connor. Enjoy the game. Gentlemen, appreciate it. All right, buddy. Connor with us on the Johnston RVCenter.com hotline. 